Hello everyone. Thank you for your patience and welcome to the webinar titled Using JReview to Analyze Clinical and Pharmacovigilance Data in Desperate Systems, presented by Proficients Vicki Green and Integrated Clinical Systems Eric Herbell. I'm Eugene Stefanov, the Marketing Manager for Proficients Life Sciences Practice. And before I turn it over to Vicki and Eric, I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. During the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode. However, you, sim you may submit questions to the speaker at any time today by typing them in the chat feature located on the left side of your screen. Please state your questions clearly. And keep in mind, other webinar participants will not see your questions or comments. Nonetheless, your questions to the speakers will be addressed as time allows toward the end of the presentation. If you still have unanswered questions after the webinar or would like to request information, feel free to use the contact information on the various slides throughout the presentation. Please note that today's webinar is being recorded and will be sent to you within 24 hours. A link to the PDF version of the presentation will also be included. This concludes our housekeeping items. I would now like to turn the call over to Vicki Green and Eric Herbell. Hi, good morning everyone, and thanks so much for joining and taking your time out today to listen to a little bit about um, what we would like to share related to our services around JReview. Um, so first I'm going to kind of go through just the agenda of what we plan to cover today. Um, I'm just going to do a brief introduction of myself and Eric, just so you know a little bit about us. I'm going to do a little background on Proficient and our Life Sciences Solutions. And then at that point, I'm going to talk a little bit about our background with JReview and, and how Proficient and ICS works together as partners and a little bit of an overview of what we've done together and what we hope to do together more in the future. And then I'm going to turn it over to Eric, and he's going to go through and talk about why is JReview um, a good solution, how can it help you in your day-to-day -day, um, work at your companies um, in being able to review your data and get your hands on your data in a user-friendly way. Um, Eric will also talk a little bit about the new um, features um, in version 10, um, and then we'll jump right into the demonstration. Um, I'm going to make this pretty quick because I know everyone is interested in, in you know, getting right in and looking at JReview. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I actually um, have been in the industry 20 plus years. Um, as I like to say, I kind of grew up in CROs. Um, I was in CRO organizations for um, a good amount of time, um, probably around 18 years. Um, and then I migrated over into working um, in consulting um, companies. Um, I was with originally CSS Informatics for about eight years and with Biofarm for about four and a half. Um, and recently due to an acquisition, we're now part of Proficient. So my role um, is basically around helping customers um, with solutions in the life sciences for applications and services, um, things that we can help you with. Um, I actually have a pretty broad background, um, a technical, I've worked also in the business area. So it kind of helps me to relate to what is needed in the business as well as on the technical side. I'm also responsible for working very closely with our hosting and support customers. Um, those support customers may be people we support um, more extensively in our hosting, or also um, things that we do on-premise for customers. So also um, today I'm very excited to be doing this webinar with Eric. Um, Eric actually um, was with a pharmaceutical company for around 17 years, and in 1994 he actually founded um, ICS, and that is where um, he was one of the primary people in help um, to actually architect JReview and, and put that together and has been involved in that heavily. Um, so moving on, um, just a little bit um, about Proficient. Um, for those of you who may not know, Proficient is a, a large IT consulting organization. Um, and actually um, we're throughout North America and Europe. Um, and really our strategy and goal is to help um, drive business solutions and technologies for companies to be able to be more, more efficient in what they do on a daily basis. Um, one of our primary goals is to work with you not only to deliver a solution but also 
to really become a partner with you. Um, you know, we don't want to implement something and walk away. We want to continue to be there um, to help provide solutions for you um, to help you meet your business needs. Proficient was founded in 1997. Um, again, you'll see that we have many offices throughout the United States. Um, we also have some um, global offshore um, resources that we have in some different countries as well. Um, and again, repeat business is one of our huge things that um, we like to talk about because again, we want to build partnerships with, with organizations. Um, so a little bit about life sciences. Um, a lot of you probably know the name Biofarm Systems and have heard it for years. Um, and so we were acquired by Proficient on April 1st of this year, and now we are the life sciences practice um, within Proficient's vertical business units. Um, some of those other ones may be healthcare. Um, and so our services of what we offer um, are still the same across the life sciences arena um, in all of the different areas. Um, and so anywhere from implementation to hosting um, to application support, um, we also are a gold, uh, now actually a platinum partner of Oracle, um, becoming part of Proficient, and that allows us to resell software solutions to our customers as well if they would like to work with us. Um, so what I'd like to do um, right now is tell you a little bit about what we specifically have been doing related to JReview. Um, our partnership we created with ICS a couple of years ago, um, and we are all offering hosting services um, for JReview. Um, a lot of these um, individuals that are hosting JReview with us are people who are coming on new as hosting customers with us related to life sciences applications or existing customers that are looking for a reporting tool of how they can become more efficient and do things, pull their data out and integrate with some of their different applications. Um, and so this has kind of been a way of, of we've worked together, um, we've come up with a way that we can work together as partners um, where there may proficient and ICS are basically kind of a team in one. Um, and so ICS may do your training, um, but we may do your implementation. And we're really, again, a, a team that works together um, underneath one project manager when we're working with customers. Also, one of the great things that we've done to make this um, affordable for customers and also a lot of customers naturally that host also like to kind of pay for their licenses at the same time. So we've worked together to create kind of a um, solution of where you can utilize perpetual licenses in the hosting environment, or also you could look, look to sublease licenses. Um, and so that's also um, something that we're very excited about and have, have had some of our existing hosting customers um, move towards. So now um, just a very brief overview of, of um, a few things before I turn it over to Eric that we have done together with, with ICS. Um, we've, we've moved some customers that had on-premise implementations of JReview along with, um, say for example, Oracle Clinical and RDC and TMS into our hosting. Um, and kind of part of that, we've upgraded them to the new versions. Again, as I mentioned, we've had other customers that have been utilizing you know, some of the safety systems and some of the clinical systems and they want to use some type of reporting tool. And so we've added that additional product and been able to offer those subleasing licenses and things to them. Or if they already had perpetual licenses with ICS, we've also been able to allow them to utilize those within the hosting environment. So that's just a little bit about what we've done. We're very excited about this partnership. And we're very excited about being able to bring this to you. Um, I'm sure we have a lot of individuals on the call that may already have JReview and are interested in what's new, what's going on. And then there may be some of you out there that are looking for a solution like this. So um, at this point, Eric, I'd like to turn it over to you to jump right into JReview because I know what, that's what everybody's interested in. Great. Thanks, Vicki. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, just to a couple slides to a high level description of what uh, JReview is and then and then we'll, we'll spend most of the time actually looking at um, the current the latest version of JReview and focusing also on some of the new new features uh, some of the things that are especially 
interesting about JReview uh, are that from the very beginning, based on my own background and the, the rest of the folks um, at, at ICS, we're, we're all from the farm industry or C uh, CROs working in the farm industry. So this is our, our background and our, um, we had decided at the very beginning to develop the systems specifically as clinical applications. And so um, based on that, we're, we're able to make certain assumptions about the data um, and build in functionality into JReview that, that fits specifically for the job of reviewing clinical data, whether you're a data manager or a clinician or other, other team member in, in um, uh, medical research and uh, clinical research. So things such as understand what a patient is and baseline and endpoint, and that, um, as alluded to in earlier slides, we integrate with quite a variety of, of clinical data sources uh, right out of the box. That helps to keep the uh, maintenance and admin down to bare bones so that when, when you add a new study to Oracle Clinical, for example, JReview just knows about it because we're reading from the system tables of the underlying underlying database and various other things you'll see during during the conduct of the um, the demonstration. I won't read the slide; <laughs> you get the idea. But we'll be uh, going going through those uh, many of those. Um, the other um, this is just a, a recap of a quick recap of the uh, variety of, of clinical data sources that that are are currently supported, including not only uh, a variety of commercially available clinical data uh, data management system or EDC systems or drug safety systems, but a whole host of the current crop of data warehouse products of Oracle LSH and uh, Entomos, uh, Entomize, and, and, and so on, and SAS drug development. And, um, and JReview is installed at the FDA um, working with the uh, primarily in their, in their main production environment of JReview is using uh, SAS data sets working um, that they receive as part of uh, drug submissions. Uh, we also integrate with the uh, Janus uh, Janus database environment, which is a new new environment uh, being developed at the FDA for receipt and, and storage of, of a, a variety of uh, uh, studies um, such that they can do cross-study analysis, cross-drug uh, drug analysis to uh, answer those, those drug class kind of questions. <clears throat> um, and, and so as, as a result, uh, we, we try to focus on the, the product being um, easy to use, intuitive, and, and as I mentioned, would really make sure that it's a comprehensive in functionality. And that's based on so many people and so, uh, the majority of pharma and CROs around the world using the product um, have a lot of great ideas, and we keep adding them to the product. That's how the product keeps growing. And so um, uh, the folks... Um, Based on those new ideas, we come out with a major new release about once once a year, uh, and, and of course there are a Japanese and now a Chinese version available for for uh, J Review. So um, we're during the demonstration going to go go through a, a variety of of typical scenarios of use of J Review. Um, to give you a good overview of, of using JReview for those of you who have not seen the product before. Um, so I, I apologize. Those, those folks that are already using JReview apologize. The first, first few minutes are going to be familiar territory uh, for, that you've seen before, uh, but thought it would be important to put it in context. And then we'll take a look at what's new in uh, version 10, uh, which is focusing a lot on the risk-based monitoring support. Uh, we've added uh, specific analyses within JReview and visualizations specific to risk-based monitoring type of information. And of course, um, as, as usual, we keep adding additional new uh, graph types. So this, this time, uh, some interesting trellis plots and lots of other, other in, in, uh, examples. So let me switch to desktop sharing mode. And launch uh, launch J Review. So the the first thing I'm going to do is to of course uh, f 
um, when we first get into JReview, we're presented with um, a list of studies organized by Drug Project in the Drug Project folders. In this particular demo database, I just have, have one, one project. Um, as When I click on the project folder, it show, displays the list of studies that are, that are currently um, in the environment available, uh, available for my, my access. We're always very, um, very keen on, on respecting the uh, study level access controls that are implemented in the underlying system such that if, if your user ID only has access to certain studies based on privilege settings in Oracle Clinical or whatever system um, we're accessing, you'll only see those studies that you have access to, of course, which is, is really important, especially if you happen to be a, a CRO, for example, um, and you don't want people from different companies, you might might be storing the data in one database, but you want to make sure that they can only see their studies and not the other other uh, sponsor company's studies. Uh, when you, when you s select a click on one of the studies, what happens is that a variety of things are filled in now for that particular study, the first of which being in this uh, patient selection criteria window. Uh, we, we see a list of types of data that are being uh, collected for that study. Uh, and you notice that we have these as descriptions of those uh, tables or data sets so that people that are perhaps not so familiar with the, the data or data structures um, have a better chance of finding what they're looking for. When I click on one of these uh, panels, we see the last, same kind of thing, the description of the items, again, in uh, description form. This window is where we would tell the system the characteristics of the patient subgroup if we're interested in a subset analysis. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it at all patients mode. Uh, the other two things to uh, draw your attention to are these uh, previously defined and saved patient subsets, which are essentially these definition of patient subgroups and then saved for later re reuse. And um, most interestingly, the output specifications. And these are a library of previously defined and saved reporting objects, reports, graphs, patient profiles, anything you can do in uh, JReview will show up when you save it and share it. And the way that we save and share things um, can, you can share things with, um, with no one if you want to keep it private or to yourself just as you're experimenting with things or sharing it with other people in your functional user group, like other data managers, other clinicians, or share it with everyone. Uh, and also the notion of saving things at a, a higher level, a higher scope, such as uh, not just saving things for the current study, but maybe all, all studies in the current project and, and so on. Before we start to access different types of objects and go through a typical use scenario, I wanted to switch gears into a different user interface that is often quite popular and often as a uh, starting point for when you're using getting into JReview. Um, this is what we call dashboard view mode. And what's happening is that it's going out at this point is uh, retrieving different graphs and reports and a patient profile for the first of, of the um, displayed favorite tab, which is called labs. And I'm going to click on one other and have it go out. These are, um, these are actually running live at this point. There's also an option to run, uh, do this in cached mode, which means it's previously executed and comes back even uh, really, really much, much quicker. But the, the purpose of dashboard views are to have um, the ability to store a variety of, of favorite tabs of logically related uh, graphs and reports and so on um, in, in, in these tabs such that, for example, your favorite looks at a uh, high level look at what's going on with labs or AEs or maybe study status and so on. Um, this is a, a one first starting point of just going in and taking a quick look as an overview of what's, what's going on in the study currently. Um, but interestingly enough, these are all JReview defined objects that had been defined in the, the 
uh, native interface that we were in just before, but had been published to dashboard views, and we'll, we'll show you how, how easy it is to do that um, in just a minute. But they're also, because they're uh, JReview objects, uh, they are just as interactive as they would be in the, the original or native interface, such that if you click on a point of, in one of these graphs, these, these are two baseline endpoint graphs for two different liver enzymes and a, um, a simple spreadsheet listing of lab, lab data liver enzymes for all of the patients. When I clicked on that patient point here, it sent a message to every other patient level display to please highlight the data that belongs to this patient. So it, it highlighted that, that patient's point here. It highlighted the rows in the, um, the, the listing for the, that belong to that particular patient. And for the graph patient profile over here, it f switched to that patient's graph patient profile. If I click on another one, it says, so every time I click on one of these, it, it goes out and chain, selects that particular patient or displays that. Alternatively, if I have a group of patients I'm interested in, if I just click and drag, and I, I, I held the left mouse key down and then clicking and dragging, just like you would in PowerPoint or something like that to a group, select a group of points, um, what happens in this case is that it sends a message to highlight each of those patients in the other graphs, so those patient points are highlighted as a little circles around each of the point. And in the in the report, it does something a little differently, and that's that it, it um, temporarily hides everybody else, uh, hides all of the patients that are not in that visual selection, so that your focus can zoom in on those patients, the idea being that you're looking for presumably looking for outliers and then following trails on those. And then it shows you the first of those four uh, graph patient profile, which then can just uh, click on next case, next case, and take a look at each one of those um, down here. Of course, in the um, other higher level, uh, just sort of an aggregate view of um, the study status, for example, here's uh, or an overall uh, demographic profile of the of the uh, the study and have uh, uh, distribution of, of demographics uh, gender and race um, uh, age uh, box whiskers age distribution by investigators completion status by investigators interesting thing with bar charts are that um, if you click on one of the bars it sends a message to any other patient level display to uh, let me know who those 19 patients are. In this, this bar, there are 19 patients who are uh, black male patients. Well, here's the list of those 19 patients and the first of the, those for the graph patient profile. But you also notice something else that happened. The, um, uh, the other bar charts have little cross-hatching uh, displayed that is basically telling us those 19 patients are distributed um, across the different bars in this way, in this little crosshatch, in the context of the entire, uh, the, the original bar. So you see um, the, the whole population and then the subset population by, so you can see in contrast how it's going. Well, if we wanted to create a new dashboard view, um, all you do is click on this new view set uh, button and it, end up with some empty panes to write in, as it were, or publish into. And all you do is click, uh, pop out this Explorer tab, and um, then you see the same list of objects, uh, reporting objects that we saw before. And it's simply a matter of, of, of clicking, selecting the one that you're interested in, clicking and dragging and putting it into the tab that you're interested in. Maybe that's an SGOT and let's see, SGPT. And the, the same report. And uh, maybe a shift table, uh, an LDH uh, shift table, a three by three matrix, and so on. So that's how you uh, create a new dashboard. It's obviously pretty straightforward. Then you just uh, click on the save and give it a uh, description of that's what will show up in the, the tab. 
um, and also specify if you want to save this view set, um, keep it to yourself, private, maybe share it with other people in uh, user groups or share it with other everybody in uh, public, and set the, the level, the scope. So let's. But the interesting thing is that's um, that's not a separate product. That's just part of JReview, just a way of packaging different um, reports and graphs for e quick and easy access, um, such that the end user doesn't have to find the reports to execute them, but rather they're just there immediately show up. Let's uh, then once you're happy with that, that's interesting. You got a, a quick idea of what's going on currently in the study. Now I'd like to go in, uh, toggle out of dashboard mode, and uh, go further into more interesting analyses and um, interactions and so on. Before we do that, though, I wanted to show you something else that is alluded to, and, and that's other slide. Um, it's really important in clinical research, and that's that very often people, when you're working on a um, a, uh, a drug project, and you typically have multiple uh, protocols being uh, being executed. It's very interesting to be able to look across the studies to see well what's going on with overall adverse event profile for uh, all of the studies, that all of the phase two studies or all the phase three studies in the particular uh, drug project, and. You do that. You do that in JReview just simply by, and you could guess what I did. I just hit the either Control key or Shift key, multi-selected the studies that I wanted to pool, and it dynamically pools those on the fly. Didn't move data anywhere. It just just um, um, executes that um, a, a essentially unioning of all of the or a concatenation of all of the data for those studies where the data is in common between the studies. Um, if you have special special types of, of analysis or data being collected for one of the studies and not the other, that special data will drop out of this pooled view. Uh, but, but for typical things like safety and, and efficacy and, and uh, safety, overall safety profiles and so on, you'll, you'll certainly see that. Um, well, those are typically standard across the studies. Uh, now let's go on and uh, go through a typical use pattern that we see with many of our uh, customers, in, including the, uh, the medical reviewers at the FDA. Um, they'll typically go in and start looking at the uh, the population at as an overall an aggregate view of the population to see if there are any um, potential issues or problems and um, that that are apparent. And we do that by, first of all, open up one of these, uh, the library area of uh, safety, for example. And these, these descriptions of the, the folders are, are whatever is, is your choice of at the, the site during, during uh, definition and saving of these. I'm going to initially bring up a, a Heis Law chart. And any of these, all you do to execute them is double click on it. And it pops up the, it goes out, retrieves the specifications of, of the graph that we wanted to, to do, uh, execute, and then retrieves the data and brings it back and displays it um, in a window. And I'm going to bring up two other things very quickly, just that same simple lab listing. And also going to bring up a medical history Uh, listing and a an adverse event listing. So one of the things that um, it's interesting to when you're working in JReview, it's a um, in the the native or original interface. One of the things that most folks are are comfortable with doing um, and that's resizing moving windows so that you can see more things that um, as in any of the windows or types of information that you're interested in at the time it's completely open ended you can open as many as you want and just um, resize them position them so you can see what's going on and then um, in the case of the Heislaw chart this is a, a t typical definition of display of a Heislaw chart where we're, in this case, uh, plotting the peak P 
peak um, SGPT value relative to upper limit of norm for each patient's um, lab values um, versus the total bilirubin, a peak total bilirubin um, relative to its upper limit of normal. So that each patient, each point corresponds to a patient point, and then we can draw the um, the limits of the three times upper limit or two times upper limit, which are definitions of clinically significant um, levels. And so anything above this two times upper limit is considered clinically significant for, to uh, for the total bilirubin, and uh, anything to the right of the three times upper limit is clinically significant for uh, SGPT. Or, you know, um, so Obviously, we're interested in finding out who are those patients and what's going on with them. If I click on that patient point, it does the same thing that we saw before. Um, it, it sends a message to highlight that patient's uh, data in the, the lab listing and also uh, any of the listings that are displayed or other graphs. Um, you see the medical history for that patient and any adverse events that are being that were presented. Um, and uh, de uh, defined for that patient. Interesting thing is that that behavior that I just did, this clicking on a patient point, uh, is all just built-in behavior in JReview because that's one of the characteristics we realize is really important when working with clinical data. And that was in version one back in 94, <laughs> this, this uh, patient uh, identification or uh, drill down capability. Uh, same thing as if if we lasso a group of points, it does the same thing. It hides everybody else. So we see those, those three patients in the lab listing, those three patients' uh, medical history and the uh, adverse events for uh, those. The other, other interesting thing um, in the not only graphs, so that the notion of starting with an aggregate view and going to a detailed view is, is really basic concept in in uh, JReview and a typical use pattern within for whether you're a data manager or a clinician of rather than going f um, through every patient um, as like we used to do <laughs> when reviewing data of reviewing every case report form or every uh, patient's uh, summary or every line in a r report, um, these days it's more about a uh, typical approach is to look at the, the population as a whole, looking at um, outliers and following trails and trying to answer the questions of what's going on with those. Are, do we have a problem uh, related to that? Of course, um, the other, other interesting behavior is that if you see an interesting entry in any of the um, reports, they talk to each other also. So for example, um, if we find, uh, here's a patient uh, that reported a duodenal ulcer, if I click on that, that row in this report, it does the same thing. It sends a message in the other direction. Um, so it highlights that patient's row in the report and the medical history and that patient's lab listings and highlights that patient's point in the, um, the Heislaw chart. So it, it all, it talks, it, it's completely open-ended. It talks to um, any of the patient level uh, objects uh, of interest. Uh, let me bring up a different type of, of graph that's um, pretty popular these days for looking at, and we call this a shift graph. It's, it's also a baseline endpoint graph, as we saw originally, but it also has the characteristics of um, during the definition of the graph, you can specify the upper and lower limits of the, the normal range for the, the lab test. And then it draws the lines there and then counts the patients in each of the sections by whatever by variable you have to find, in this case, a uh, treatment, treatment group. Um, I'm going to bring up one other thing that's really popular, um, um, and that's the graph patient profile. We saw that briefly in the, uh, in the dashboard mode, but I didn't spend time looking and uh, describing what we were looking at for the graph patient profile. Let me do that now, just a, a couple minutes of, in the graph patient profile, 
um, this is all done on the fly, uh, no external programming or preparation. It's, it's all being handled at runtime all of the days on drug calculations um, to plot everything in a normal uh, com uh, companion, uh, common x-axis and days axis typically. Um, you can also include visit visit numbering on um, associated with the, the days. So you get a, a reference point back to the protocol to see when, when certain things occurred relative to significant events in the protocol. But the important part of the graph patient profile is to be able to look at certain types of data and to see interrelationships between them. So for example, you see the uh, labs labs being actually plotted over time uh, with the blue band is the normal range behind the um, for that particular lab test for that patient um, and so you see this patient was seeing elevations in each of the liver enzymes uh, towards the end of the trial um, interestingly enough there was a, a dose escalation uh, towards the end of the trial that was about the same time so they might might very well be related the other other interesting things are um, we you can plot any types of data that you want to from the, the uh, from the study in this, but uh, I had included uh, labs, uh, lab chemistries, uh, adverse events, concomitant events, and dosing, so that you can also see when a, a patient um, sees uh, when a patient um, sees uh, had reported a headache and took Tylenol on the same day, had a cough, took cough syrup, and reduced dose all on the same day. Um, so you might be interested in saying, what's going on with that cough? And just click on the cough. It pops up a, a, another window that shows you the adverse events and all of the adverse events for the current patient, and it highlights the one that I clicked on. So you can get the, the rest of the story in terms of uh, severity, causality, you know, and, and so on for that was collected for that. And so whenever the way that the graph patient profile works is that if it's a receiver of that message of please highlight that patient. So whenever I click on a patient point, it's doing, doing that. Um, one basic uh, capability also that is really, really important uh, within within JReview, and that's the notion of this patient selection criteria. And let me bring up a simple demographic and completion listing so that you'll see the results immediately. So this is showing us all of the patients, uh, just the basic demographic and completion status. Let me go back to the patient selection criteria and say I'm interested in patients who uh, um, had an age greater than 50, add that to the expression, and they'll click on the update browsers. And uh, that just says, OK, I'm finished with defining the subset criteria, so let me see the results. What that does is then send a message to every displayed output, whether it's graphs, reports, patient profiles, to now only um, display only the data that belongs to patients who meet that criteria. And so now you can see this that the report got shorter and only includes patients who are over 50. Or you can include the final exam, completed evaluation, um, and say it only wanted to include patients who discontinued. Again, up, say update browsers, and now we have the, the uh, subset of reports. So that, that basic characteristic, basic behavior that affects all of the types of output is really important because that lets you look at subgroups of patients that meet criteria that you want to investigate uh, further. Um, one other very important way of reviewing data, um, again, it might be from the perspective of, of starting from an aggregate view um, and then going for particular particular um, patient of interest, another way of looking at it in addition to the graph patient profile is a formatted patient profile where we, um, and which also includes a very popular area called patient review tracking that lets you uh, tell the system when you have reviewed a patient and it keeps track of what the current review state is. So I'm, I'm look, going to look at this patient who has not yet been reviewed 
click on the profile, and it generates a, um, a PDF, nice, nice quality presentation, nice presentation quality, um, a CRT listing, a case summary listing, which uh, looks like somebody spent a lot of time doing this in SAS programming, but not. It's a uh, it's built-in behavior where you can just pick the the modules and items of interest, and then you can modify the the fonts and the the uh, alignments and those kind of things as appropriate. So the interesting thing is that this um, this is used by quite a few customers to actually generate uh, PDFs of the CRT listings and submit to regulatory agencies as well as use them internally. But also in context with the patient review tracking, uh, you can now say, well, I, let's make believe we just reviewed that patient. I'll check this I've reviewed checkbox. And now it switches to reviewed and clinical uh, type review and uh, my, my name and today's date and so on. And that sets up an interesting uh, scenario where it's, it's very nice to be able to say, well, what if you reviewed a patient last week, but you have, and of course, ongoing trials, we have a constant influx of new data, newer updated data, so it's nice to know, well, we've got a patient who has, um, um, has previously been reviewed, but I have new, new data for that, and so this, this is uh, highlighting that reviewed, but new data, and uh, highlighted in purple. When I click on that, we see that the, the new or updated data uh, for that patient is also highlighted. Uh, very, very important. Um, one other thing before and, um, we get into the actual new, new things in version 10, we'll spend just a couple minutes on that. Um, I wanted to draw your attention to some interesting capabilities that that are quite quite heavily used um, by a number of customers, um, and that's the ability to launch either R scripts or SAS programs that have been written externally, uh, but generate those directly uh, from from a user launching those from a J review session, and that's especially launching uh, SAS programs is. Um, is huge. There are a lot of a lot of customers do that very, very very heavy use of that. So this, in both cases, this is a an R script actually an R script that was written by uh, Jay Levine at the FDA um, to do some more interesting and more advanced graphics and statistics and so on. And uh, it was an externally written SAS program, um, both of which was executed on the server side, brought the results back and displayed in the window. Interestingly, that they also can participate in the patient selection criteria um, that, uh, that is part of, uh, if you have a patient selection criteria displayed and you uh, open that up um, and execute an R script or a patient uh, or a SAS program, it will show you the, the results for the patients you're interested in. So last, uh, last area, the, the new areas for um, uh, for version 10, uh, the uh, risk-based monitoring area, what what we've added to JReview is the ability to define risk indicators within JReview using very familiar patterns, and that's that's done by in advanced tab a risk-based monitoring indicator definitions. We won't go into that uh, right now, but it's a, very similar to the use of patient selection criteria and so on, but specifically to uh, define the risk indicators and the thresholds that you believe would, um, would yield a low, medium, or high risk rating for a particular site, and then schedule that for periodic execution, typically weekly, biweekly, or monthly. And the, the result then, we store when we do the risk-based monitoring analyses, we store the results in some new tables that are associated with JReview. And then when you get into this area, which can either be launched by a, a saved, uh, saved object or just launched by this new browser, the risk-based monitoring uh, data browser, comes up with the current state of showing you the, uh, for each, each site, uh, down the, the rows and the risk indicators across the the uh, the analysis results uh, showing a red a red thumbs down is high risk green thumbs up is low risk and yellow is medium risk to so see that what the current state is for each of the 
each of the sites. Uh, you can click on the tops of those to, to sort them so that the highest risk uh, for that particular indicator bubbles up to the top and so on. So you can do any of those, including a, an overall uh, rating. Um, but that shows you the current state. Often people want to say, well, that's interesting, but I want to know well, what's going on over time. Um, so because we're doing the analyses and storing the results in these tables, we're storing those um, um, over the course of, of time and then generate a displaying a um, uh, box whiskers for each of the analysis time points for each of the uh, ris risk indicators. Um, superimposed on red, yellow, and green um, threshold areas of the high risk, medium risk, and low risk. So you can see the, all of the, essentially the distribution of all of the, um, the investigator sites um, using box whiskers. But if you wanted to click on one particular site to see what, what's going on with that relative to the rest of the uh, uh, sites, uh, then we actually plot the values over, over the course of time for that investigator site. So it's a handy way of uh, doing that and lots of other features to be able to uh, store suggested results when they hit a, a high risk and, and so on. Um, and, uh, and the only other thing to display is the trellis plot. Um, and then we'll, and we'll wrap it up and open up for questions. The trellis plot is basically the ability to uh, display a variety of numeric variables down down the rows, patient uh, patients across the columns, so you can very quickly scan through. It's sort of like a patient profile, but with lots of patients at the same time. So you can scan those with um, color coding of study period, uh, dose levels, and so on, with milestones uh, listed. So with that, let me it out of uh, desktop sharing mode and return it uh, turn back to uh, Eugene for question and question answer period great thank you Eric so before we get started on the Q&A session feel free to ask your questions via the chat box and uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can in the time allowed Eric if you can follow along on the questions tab mm -hmm. That would be great. And I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, ask the questions as they were submitted. So feel free to um, you know, rephrase them if, you, if necessary. So the first question is, how will JReview support risk-based approaches, for example, study oversight or risk-based monitoring? Uh, we're, our approach is that um, we're, we're trying to provide tools to provide the information for um, for everyday use, uh, periodic use by clinicians and uh, medical monitors to keep an eye on all of their their uh, sites that are in there, but also it has the ability to roll up to um, higher groups of sites um, you know, by region or by country and stuff like that. So it's really um, it's it's intended to uh, be a regular use thing. It's not so much across multiple studies or study oversight. It's really for um, a tool for clinicians and monitors to use um, uh, to support this activity. Um, it's, um, and, and of course, it's, it's such a, um, a popular area, hot, hot topic in the, in the industry. We'll continue to, to grow this area in additional support. We also have um, other um, updates in the next next version to support additional types of analysis and predictive analyses. Great. The next question, and I'm just going to jump around yep. uh, out of order. Um, when is version 10 available, or is it available now? Uh, it is available now. It has been for a while. So, um, so any anyone that is a current customer that is uh, um, self-hosted, uh, just let us know if you'd like to update, and we'll get uh, work with you on that. Okay. Um, do you have many clients using RBM functionality? If so, what are their challenges? Um, this is a brand new feature, and well, interestingly enough, we had discovered as we developed this over the last couple of years, um, working with a number of our customers um, based on feedback with um, types of, of capabilities they thought of most appropriate. But we discovered that a number of our customers had been using 
JRIVIEW as in support of this area even before we started to add risk-based monitoring specific capabilities. And they would be generating graphs and reports and analyses um, in, in JReview. So that it was already being used by a number of companies, um, at BMS and a number of others um, in support of this area. But um, now that with, so this is a brand new area that just just recently released about a month or so ago. So we don't don't have a number of customers are are jumping on it, and wanting to move move with it, but um, we don't have a lot of experiences yet in terms of um, what um, uh, how how it's going with the customers as yet. So it's a brand new area. However, it's not been uh, not been developed in a vacuum. It's very much uh, developed with a number of existing customers to make sure that it hits the mark um, in terms of functionality and desired uh, desired capabilities. Great. How will data from different sources be merged to use these in JReview? What about um, data from central labs, IVRS, yep. ECRS, EPROS, and yep. CTMS? Yep. Typically, the uh, scenario is that um, we, we think in terms of a uh, central a central or home database, if you will, might be Oracle Clinical, um, might be something else. And typically those other data sources are coming in via SAS data sets. And, um, and that's the typical approach is to bring those SAS data sets into, onto the same, same server as the, um, as the Oracle database or a near, nearby server. And JReview can access both the, the Oracle database and the Oracle Clinical database uh, environment and also the SAS data sets that are coming in um, and look at it as a whole. The other very popular trend these days uh, with JReview customers is um, what we call a pure SAS uh, scenario where, where they're receiving their, SAS da their data from CROs perhaps um, as SAS data sets or maybe an EDC vendor as SAS data sets and bringing the uh, SAS data set versions of uh, Central Labs and IBRS and any, any other special things, putting them all together and accessing JReview against that. Okay. Great. Is it possible to generate PDFs for submission to review agencies in mass? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, for in the case of, um, I think that that question probably relates to uh, formatted patient profiles, the the case summary or the CRT listings that we're looking at. Uh, a, no, this is actually a separate question. Um, oh, okay. Um, but in, in generating PDFs typically for uh, yeah, yeah. I think that that one um, that uh, generating a PDF for submission uh, for each each patient um, yes there is a uh, capability actually it's a it's an optional module that, where you can schedule um, schedule many many or all the patients um, at a time and then it just generates those that what we saw interactively it generates those as a batch job and just stores them in a, a directory so you don't have to watch it generate them it just does it and then <laughs> there they are all the PDFs in a, in a directory great can you please show the ability to uh, for printed reports that they can mm -hmm. show sponsors or CROs um, not quite sure if I followed that. So um, it's the first uh, question. That show the ability to show printed reports to show. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that uh, I would say that that's probably the um, in the area of of generating uh, formatted reports, uh, either the tabular patient profiles or um, uh, form. Uh, a nice looking reports and I can do that very quickly just show you one example um, come back into sharing mode um, where we would do a uh, formatted formatted report any of these the reports are either um, uh, spreadsheet style reports or also there's a PDF versions of the reports where you can get fancier in terms of fonts and alignments and so on. And this is one of the examples, um, including watermarks if you want to put draft or confidential or whatever. Um, and that's uh, exported, exportable directly as a PDF because it already is a PDF. Okay, so that, that and the um, 
uh, also in the capability of the of uh, the formatted patient profiles as well. Great. Uh, can we print or export tree view report in version 10? Print or export a tree view report. I'm not sure what that means, unfortunately. Um, a tree view report, if it's if it means a list of what, yeah, I, I have to say I'm not sure what sure. that means. I'm sorry. Okay. That, that um, person, if they could contact us directly uh, and describe uh, more more fully what what you're saying, that we don't really have a tree tree view report per se in J Review. So. Uh, is there any version of JReview that supports filtering the columns which are being exposed from source systems? Um, yes, actually, well, the, uh, there are a couple different ways of, of filtering the columns, and that's um, actually in, it was added into I think 925, um, the ability to filter once a report is already um, um, generated, you can also add post hoc um, uh, filter on the, um, on the results from within the report in a, in a manner much, much like the way that you could do it in uh, Excel. So you can filter on the columns. Or of course, um, filtering, uh, there's um, any of the, the reports, graphs, and crosstabs, um, there's something called an output filter where you can do exactly that. You can filter on the, the columns of the, the values of, of columns that should be included in the report. So that's, that's a basic capability within JReview. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. So we are coming up to the hour, um, so that will end our Q&A portion. We're sorry if we couldn't get to your question. We know there were a number left hanging, so we'll be sure to get back to you if uh, it requires us to do so. If you have other questions, feel free to contact us via phone or email. You can also visit uh, Proficient's Life Sciences Practice page on the website. Once again, please note that a recording of today's webinar will be sent to you within 24 hours for you to review and share with your colleagues. A link to the slide deck will also be included. We want to thank you very much for your participation and hope that the information we provided you with today was helpful. And we look forward to having you join future webinars. Thank you so much for joining, and thank you, Eric and Vicki. Thanks. Thanks, Eugene.